Hello, women made in the image of God. Today we are back with another Bible in a year video. Grace and peace. Um, so yeah, let's read our catechism question after we pray together. And then we get to read chapter 17 of Leviticus and Matthew 27. Woo! Let's get into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to gather today, together today. Um, thank you that you are holy and perfect and righteous in all your ways. God, I ask that you would please um, guide us as we read today. May we have ears to hear and eyes to see. God, I pray that you would um, give us hearts to understand. Lord, would you open our mind to understand your scriptures so that we would grow in love uh, for you and by as 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 and through and by by seeing your love your truth um, your worthiness um, your holiness your absolute amazingness um, as we read your word together today please help us to not lean on our own understanding but on you in all of our ways oh god um, we ask this in your precious 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 name jesus name amen all right so we are on question number 16 so question did our first parents continue in this estate wherein they were created answer our first parents being left to the freedom of their own will fell from the estate wherein they were created by sinning against god so they sinned against god and therefore fell from the state wherein they were created. Um, which, if you look at the question before, um, yeah. All right, so the proof, or the text for this particular question is Genesis 3, 6. So Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the trees or er, to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate then the eyes of both were opened and they knew what they they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves sewing cloths so they tried to cover themselves um, by their own righteousness but they they couldn't hide from god and they had no righteousness of their own anyways uh verse eight and they heard the sound of the lord god in other words that's what it, like it reminds us of and points us to but verse eight um and they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And then verse 13 from the same passage. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And then Ecclesiastes 7, 29. See this alone I found, that God made man upright. But they have sought out many schemes. I'm going to read um, James, James from James 1. Wow. I don't know what translation that is. It's no thank you to that, though, whatever that is. Let's go back to ESV. All right, there we are. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Exactly. And that's what you see happening in these texts that we just read. The woman saw 
delight, um, desire, and then she sinned. So God is good. It's it. It was not God that God is not the author of evil, but He works all things ultimately together according to the counsel of His will. And so, though we sinned, the Lord, the Lord knew what was going to happen. He's not dumb. He's God. (laughs) And so, he worked it all together according to his perfect will so that Christ would be magnified, that Christ would be, um, that the cross, that now we're able to know God, um, even though we don't even deserve to know him. And this showed that. But anyways... I'm going to go off on a tangent if I continue, but, but, uh, just see that those passages, they just connect so well. So I just wanted to bring that up, but yeah, the Ecclesiastes 7 29 is great text for this line. I'm just going to read it one more time. See this alone. I found that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. All right. So. Leviticus 17. Leviticus 17. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the people of Israel and say to them, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. If any one of the house of Israel kills an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp or kills it outside the camp, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to offer it as a gift to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood guilt shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. This is to the end that the people of Israel may bring their sacrifices that they sacrifice in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord, to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and sacrifice them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall throw the blood on the altar of the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and burn the fat for a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat demons, after whom they whore. This shall be a statute forever for them throughout their generations. And you shall say to them, Anyone of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to offer it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from his people. If any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. Any one also of the people of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who takes in hunting any beast or bird that may be eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. For the life of every creature is its blood, its blood is its life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. And every person who eats what dies of itself or what is torn by beasts, whether he is a native or a sojourner, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash them or bathe his flesh, he shall bear his iniquity. Wow, what a chapter. Um, Immediately, I think of, I wonder if they'll bring this verse up, but I'm going to just bring it up really quickly, and then we'll read the notes. I'm going to try and find it first. I think it is this first John. Yes, first John five. Is that what it said?
Yeah, here it is. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. So just make me think about made me think about that because um you know only through Christ atoning on our behalf can we have life. We have life in Christ alone. Otherwise we have no life. We don't have true life, in other words. All right, so let's read the notes. In these chapters, so this is 17 through um, 27, so we just only read 17 for now. Um, It says, in these chapters, the Lord's demands for holiness clearly reach into every aspect of Israel's life. It's so important. The Lord's demands for holiness clearly reach into every aspect of Israel's life. In a discussion on topics as diverse as sexual behavior and the year of Jubilee, capital crimes, and the tabernacle loaves, the Lord teaches that Israel must reflect his holiness in their behavior. Amen. must reflect his holiness in their behavior amen in the wilderness period animals could be killed only at the tabernacle even for ordinary meals this was to prevent secret sacrifices to idols after entering canaan this rule was relaxed in the wilderness period animals could only be killed could killed be killed only at the tabernacle even for ordinary meals this was to prevent sacrifices to idols that's important detail good after entering canaan this rule was relaxed oh okay uh, seventeen four has shed blood or has committed a transgression as grievous as any involving bloodshed. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Cut off. This language is general expression for coming under God's curse. The exact meaning of which is determined by the context of scripture. It may, and then it continues. Um, in human, in any a, in any event, God puts the offender to death with or without human agency. Um, okay, no tangents. I'm just going to read this note. One of the most important theological statements in Leviticus um, see also Leviticus 18.5. Life is sacred because it belongs to God. As a mark of as- of respect, I was going to say aspect, I don't know why. Um, as a mark of respect for life and for its creator, no Israelite may, meet, may eat meat with blood in it for the life of the flesh. For the life of, of the flesh is in the blood. Genesis 9.4-6. through six. Ah, nice a second sorry i was just interested in how they that also this is in genesis a second reason is that the blood that makes atonement for your souls the animal's life represented by its blood shed and sacrifice takes the place of the life of the worshiper symbolically redeeming him because animal blood is the sign of salvation, people may not consume it. These ideas are both assumed and transformed in the New Testament. Christ shed blood actually atoned, actually atoned for sin. Mm-hmm. And those who drink that blood spiritually, receiving the benefits of his death through faith in him alone, have eternal life. Amen. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. 
how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Hebrews 9.14 and then 9.22, Hebrews 9.22. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1, seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have, we have fellowship with, him, with one another. And the blood of Jesus' his son cleanses us from all sin. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' his son cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Have given it for you. The sacrificial system of the Old Testament is God's gracious gift to his people to enable them to live in God's presence. In anticipation of the final and perfect blood sacrifice offered by Christ, God himself ordains the procedure whereby his righteous wrath might be averted and his people reconciled to him. Amen. I love this note. That's a good note. God's gracious gift to his people to enable them to live in God's presence. Amen. In anticipation of the final and perfect blood sacrifice offered by Christ, God himself ordains the procedures by, whereby his righteous mouth might be averted and his people reconciled to him. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, let's read. Let's move on to um, Matthew 27. Matthew just thinking okay yeah I want you guys to get out your real Bible right now so everyone grab your real Bible and I want you to go through this um, Yeah, just grab your real Bible, and we're gonna we're still gonna listen together on here. I also I don't think I'm gonna read any of the notes. I'm just gonna let y'all read them at the end there by yourself, um, out loud to yourself or with friends, whatever you want to do, um, as the Lord leads. I mean, but yeah, grab your real Bible and uh, go through this. I'm not gonna scroll here i'm just gonna leave this open okay twenty seven when morning came all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against jesus to put him to death and they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to pilate the governor then when judas his betrayer saw that jesus was condemned he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set, by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. 
Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified! And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified! So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children! Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, <laughs> And they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. <laughs> He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. <laughs> and the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up 
his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests of the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers? Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard.
sorry for the delay in between that, but I hope that you passed over that time of the delay. Um, All right, so once you've completed that scene, or that not scene, that part of the text, here is the notes. So notes, pause and read that, pause and read. 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 All right. Well, that is all for today. Let's pray. Again, sorry for the pause in between there. Um, I can no longer pause the or edit the text or the video unless I uh, go back and edit. But yeah, let's pray. Dear Jesus, um, thank you. Thank you so much for suffering on our behalf so that we can come to the Father and be reconciled, that we can even come to be reconciled. Um, God, I, I ask that you would help us to grow in you to love you, to understand you more day by day, growing in your grace and your knowledge. Um, and I, I pray that for those who, who are in Christ already and for those who don't know you or that are watching this video, Lord, I pray that you would save them, that you would help them to know you. Lord, um, thank you for what you've done, Lord. Just... Um, Thank you that you died, Jesus, on our behalf, and that you rose again three days after three days, and that, yeah, and that you save sinners like us from sin so that we could be with you for eternal, for eternity, Lord. Um, thank you, Jesus, um, for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, that is it. That's all the text for today. So, um, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace.